Hello, my name is Tom, and in this presentation I will present my breakthrough research on solving computational problems using PowerPoint. I will explore to what extent PowerPoint can replace conventional programming languages, as well as the benefits and limitations of using PowerPoint for such purposes. But first, a quick disclaimer. This presentation is not sponsored or endorsed by any real or hypothetical corporation located in Redmond, Washington. The views and opinions expressed are those of the author and do not necessarily reflect those of any such corporation should one exist. Only trained PowerPoint professionals should attempt to reproduce the results of this research, and the author will not be held responsible for any material, physical, or emotional damages caused by such attempts. So with that out of the way, we can proceed to the background. So as you may know, PowerPoint has hyperlinks and animations, which can be used to add interactivity to your presentations. So we have links here, and then we also have animations, which are particularly interesting because you can trigger them in different orders. So you can use these to make interesting things like applications, games, you know, typical things that you'd make in a slideshow editor. But until recently, it has been unproven as to whether you can do all things using PowerPoint, whether you can solve every computational problem with a dedicated PowerPoint file. And this is largely because in order to prove such a claim, you would need to create a Turing machine that runs in PowerPoint, or you'd have to be able to show that every Turing machine can be run within PowerPoint. So without further ado, the palindrome recognizing Turing machine. So here we have a Turing machine that decides the language palindromes of even length. So you can see that uh, like a normal Turing machine, we can move this tape. This is implemented completely with animations. There are no macros or anything else. Um, so I can write to the tape, of course. So we'll give it a simple input like this. And of course, I can also execute the Turing machine. So here we have the Turing machine's current state. And in order to continue execution, unfortunately this doesn't happen automatically, it needs a little bit of encouragement, the user has to click on each orange region. Um, now you might be concerned here that I'm making decisions whenever I'm clicking on this, but the way that this PowerPoint is set up, uh, every other area is blocked. So I can click randomly essentially, and the PowerPoint will just advance its computation. Uh, so that was the input 1.1. One, one. So this should end up being accepted. And we can see that it does indeed end on an accepting state. Uh, and I could rerun that with another input, and it would reject accordingly, depending on what it is. So this is nice, but what we'd really like to be able to do is run any Turing machine in PowerPoint. Fortunately, this is easy because the PowerPoint Turing machine is programmed entirely using punch cards. So for example, this card says that whenever the Turing machine is in state 0 and it reads a 1, then it should write a blank, move to the right, and then move to state 2. But if we change where these holes are located, we can make the Turing machine do something else and essentially imitate any transition function of any other Turing machine. All of this is accomplished using over 1,600 animations and around 700 auto shapes. The PowerPoint Turing machine offers a number of advantages over alternative programming languages, offering cross-platform support running on both mobile devices and both commercially relevant desktop operating systems. In addition, its drag and drop programming means there's no text and no syntax errors. But most importantly, you can use themes, word art, and transitions that PowerPoint is infamous for in your code. It requires asymptotically fewer auto shapes than when implemented in alternative slideshow editors, definitively proving PowerPoint to be exponentially more capable than competing software. But perhaps most notably, the PowerPoint Turing machine shows that the PowerPoint iOS app is in violation of Apple's App Store guidelines, as it shows that PowerPoint can emulate alternative apps and execute arbitrary code. In the future, I'd like to research making PowerPoint code more scalable and optimized, so that one day, every application you run on your computer can be run within PowerPoint.